city, I'd think about it, I was nervous and all this kind of thing. He said, look, go in and do it. It was pirate radio. So it was a completely different climate to what we're used to nowadays. But I went in and I did it. And I have to say, after the very first show, the book bit. And here I am, 33 years later. Uh, so when I was growing up, I was a massive nerd. And I used to scan through all the radio stations at night looking for songs that I loved. And the biggest thing is just to try and find songs that I loved. Um, and it's only when uh, Radio Ireland turned up and people like told me with this carry accent, I thought, do you know what, maybe actually I could do this for a living. So people like told me that I was listening to this for It happened the year that I came in is that the whole schedule was, was full. So there wasn't actually a space for me to have my own show. So I went on a show with a previous co op, his name is Ben Sweeney. He did a morning show, so I was like one of his co hosts. Being a DJ here at Wired meant I enjoy radio. So I felt I'd do my documentary on something personal. So I went off all around the country to find out more about different radio stations and how they have their viewers. My first station took me to my local radio station back in Mayo, Midwest Radio where I met Jerry Glennon. I then took a trip to Flirt FM to meet the one and only Paula Healy and ask her her opinion on my questions. I then interviewed our local Tommy Barrett from Wired FM here in Limerick. We were started out, we started out in pirate radio, so in those days it was kind of very simple and straightforward. We more or less just played music really and we responded, we invited listeners to phone in their requests or if something was missing or if they had a story for us. So we very much depended on our listeners for our information. Television. Television was, it was everything because when I was growing up it wasn't the internet age at all, it was just approaching the internet age where phones became a normal thing. Phones used to be like a brick. I'm not that old now before people think I was, but it was mainly television. Like the kind of RTE Den, RT2 The Den and stuff like that was the main source when I was a kid. The biggest thing I think is that I had the leisure of space and time to actually get to know stuff and to have songs grow on me. I have like a good phone and like access to the internet, but I'm not reliant on it insofar because I had a time in my life when I wasn't reliant on it because just wasn't fast and it wasn't like good but I think if you took someone now like a 13 year old you see them they're always on their phones if you took them back to say when I was 13 which was god knows weird 2006 or 2007 um, it was completely different and I think even radio has progressed since then as well like radio Back then it wasn't very visual, it was very, um, you tune in, you knew what was on, when was on. I think if you do radio well, and if you do it in the sense that you give listeners what they want, as I said, you build up that relationship with your listeners, you kind of hopefully keep your finger on the pulse of what they want. And if you give them what you want, and if you do it well, then radio continues to be its own medium in and for itself. So therefore, I don't think that, in our experience anyway, YouTube or TV has affected what we do that much. There's still a certain mystique, there's still a huge response to what we do, and thankfully we have to say we still have a very big listenership. So we might be different in that sense, but that's our experience of it. I guess the biggest thing is it's probably uh, democratised it, because everybody can access it a bit easier. Uh, the main reason, and I'm going to sound like 150 years old at this stage, but the main reason I was listening to radio was to catch songs that I wanted to hear and I was actually taping them off the radio, yes, dinosaur. Uh, but the biggest thing is now you can get everything you want on demand. So that's probably the biggest change and it's really, really tough to say. Uh, because uh, people would think I was insane sitting there waiting next to a radio to hear a song I liked. I think they'd think that was mad. Yes and no. I think it depends on the person because if you're more not open, but if you're more kind of, if you're more adventurous or more kind of experimental, I'd say it's broadened people's horizon. And finally, have you got any advice for the younger generation if radio is something they think on pursuing in the modern era and what advice would you give them? Biggest piece of advice, volunteer. Don't walk into a national radio station saying, I'd love to go on air. I've got 7,000 Instagram followers. That's great being a social media influencer, but don't just rock up to a station kind of going, I'm brilliant, look at me. Just, I'd say actually volunteer somewhere, put the work in, establish your own voice before you get there. Because the truth is that uh, community and student radio stations are where you get to develop your own voice in your own time 
and kind of stamp out what you feel like personally and what you sound like. With the game, be persistent. So do up your demo tapes. Do them up, do them well, but do them naturally. Don't be putting on any kind of an accent or a voice or bringing in this mid-Atlantic kind of thing. Be proud of who you are and where you're from. That'll stand for itself. Do up your DVD or your CD or whatever you want to do it and just keep knocking on doors and keep knocking on doors and keep persisting and eventually you will find that it pays off. So hard work and persistence is what I say. We do radio nowadays. If you don't have access to a station, if there's no student station near yourself, um, you can buy a voice recorder on, on the internet for fairly cheap. Make yourself your own podcast. I know a lot of people say podcasts are different from radio, but they're not really. Radio has more music, yes, but podcasts is basically the same talk.